What up y'all and welcome to the Wizard's Forge. This video will be covering dynamic object volumes and how to use them to spawn items and enemies. This will be great for adding enemy encounters to your dungeons and quests. With that being said, let's get started. For this video, first we're going to discuss what a dynamic object volume is. Once we define it, then we'll go over how to create a dynamic object volume and add it to our level. Next, we'll go over the item definitions table and the enemy definitions table, so we know what kind of items we can add to a DOV, what kind of enemies we can add to a DOV, and how to add items to that list. Next, we're going to add enemies to our DOV, and then we're going to set the spawn location for those enemies, so we can set where those enemies will spawn when that DOV is triggered. So what is a dynamic object volume? Well, dynamic object volume, or DOV, is an actor used to spawn various assets from their respective static tables. Now, this is commonly used to spawn items or enemies, but there are different assets you can choose from as well to spawn. Before we dive into dynamic object volumes, we must first consult our sacred text. Our next commandment is going to be, Thou shalt always ensure that you have nav mesh present when placing a dynamic object volume. This is especially important when trying to spawn enemies, as enemies will not spawn without nav mesh. Before we place our DOV, we must follow our sacred commandment. To make sure our area has nav mesh or add nav mesh ourselves, we're going to go to our navigation editor. To find that, we'll select mode at the top and press the navigation editor button. This will bring up a new panel that we can use to add nav mesh. If your ground starts glowing yellow, that's going to mean that your level has nav mesh. If it doesn't, an easy way to add nav mesh is going to be to go over to the add nav mesh related actors. From there, we'll select this nav mesh island marker and drag and drop it to the floor of our level. Once we have that, we'll select this add nav mesh button to add nav mesh to our level. Once you see that yellow, you're good to go. From here, you're good to close out of your navigation editor. To add our dynamic object volume, we're going to go to our Place Actors panel. If for some reason you don't see it, you could re-enable it by going to Windows and Place Actors. Then in the Search Classes bar, we're going to type in Dynamic. This will bring up a list of actors that have the word Dynamic in them. So we'll find Dynamic Object Volume and we'll drag and drop it into our level. With our dynamic object volume selected, we're going to scroll down to the Spawn Properties section of the Details panel. Now here we'll find an option for items to spawn. Right here it's going to give us a list of objects and spawn information for them. Next, we'll select this plus button to add an object we want to spawn from our DOV. This will bring up a DB spawn object, which will give us the option to select an item type and the item. So if we select this first option, it'll bring up a list of static tables that we can choose from. This tutorial is going to focus on the item definition and enemy definition table, but there are other options you can choose from as well. First, we'll go over the items definition static table. This table is going to be used to define all of the items in game. There are a lot of different values you can choose from, and I'm going to go over what I think are the most important. First, we're going to have the item ID. This is going to be what is the name of the item. This is going to be the name that you used when you added that item to the registry table. You'll have an option to choose the name that the player sees when they purchase the item later on. Next, we're going to have the item type. That's going to answer what type of item is this. This will determine whether the item's a broom, a potion, a piece of gear, or any of the other items that are available in game. Next, we have Rarity. This is going to be how rare is the item. This is commonly used for gear. We have different options such as Common, Basic, Rare, Epic, or Legendary. Next up, we have the Economy Value and the Sell Price. The Economy Value is going to be how much does the item cost to buy, the vendor has the item, how much will they charge for it, and the Sell Price is going to be if the player decides to sell that item, how much can they get for it. Finally is going to be the storage location, which is going to be where can the player find this item. So if it's a quest item, it'll go in their quest items inventory. If it's a gear, it'll go in their gear item inventory, and so on. To access the items definition static table, we're going to open the db static text entries. 
To find that, we're going to select Window, scroll down to DB Text Entries, and select Static. From here, we'll search Item Definition and double click on the Item Definition table. This will give us the list of all of the items we can spawn from our DOV, as well as give us the options to add more items to this table or change the value of existing items for our mods. For this example, let's look at the auto damage potion. So first we're gonna have the item ID. This item ID is auto damage potion. Now that's gonna be the ID that was used when this item was first created. So if we check the registry ID and go down to auto damage potion, we can see that the registry ID auto damage potion is a type of potion. Next, if we check the item type, we'll see that it's type potion usable, which means that it's a potion the player is able to use. Next, we'll check the rarity type and we'll see common. Most non-gear items will have a rarity of common or default. Next, we'll check the economy value and we'll see that vendors are selling this item for 1,000 knuts. Next, we'll see we have a sell price of zero. That's because in the base game, you're not able to sell potions. If you decide to make a mod that allows you to sell potions, you can change the sell price here. Then if we scroll through the rest of the table, we can see the rest of the values. So we can see that it's an inventoryable item, so the player can add it to their inventory. It's not sellable, so they can't sell it to vendors. And if you go to the last one, we'll have storage location, which is going to be where the player can find this item after they obtain it. So the auto damage potion can be found in the sanctuary wheel or the tool wheel as it's called in game. Now that we've got a better understanding of the item definition table, let's exit out of it and spawn an auto damage potion from our DOV. To spawn an auto damage potion, first we're going to select our DOV. Then we're going to scroll down to the items property section in the details panel and press the plus button next to item to spawn. Then we'll select this first option in the DB spawn object to choose what type of item we want to spawn. We know that the auto damage potion is in the item definition static table, so we're going to select item definition. Next, we're going to select the item in the item definitions table that we want to spawn. So we'll open this up and select the auto damage potion. This will add the auto damage potion to our spawn group. If we select this arrow, it'll bring up a bunch of options that we can set for our DOV. For this one, all we really care about is going to be the min actor count, which we're going to leave at 1. When we spawn in some enemies, we'll practice changing these values. Now that we've set the DOV to spawn one auto damage potion, all that's left is to set how it's going to spawn. For this, we're going to want this DOV to auto-activate whenever the player gets within a certain distance from this. So for this, we're going to make sure auto-activation is enabled, and then I usually select this show activations distance so I can get a visual of how close the player needs to be to trigger this DOV. This is going to bring up a two cubes, so the green one is going to be the trigger distance, so whenever the player enters this green cube, the DOV will trigger. So I'm going to set this to 100 to better fit our level. The next one's going to be this red cube, which is going to be the cold distance. Whenever the player leaves this area, the DOV will unspawn. So I'm going to set this to 200. All that's left to do is test and make sure our DOV is working as intended. For this test, I just made the floor a little bigger and made sure the player spawned outside of the DOV. So when I press play, and walk forward, an auto damage potion should spawn. Perfect. And then if I walk away, out of that cold distance, we'll see it despawn. And then if I walk back in again, it'll spawn again, and I can interact with it and see that it's an auto damage potion, or in game is called the Thunder Brew Potion. Next, we'll go over the enemy definition static table. Similar to the item definition static table, this table will define all of the enemies in game. There's a lot of things that go into this enemy definitions table, but for a DOV, we only need to focus on two things. The first one is going to be the enemy ID, which is going to be what is the name of the enemy in the registry table. 
Next is going to be, is spawnable? So can you spawn this enemy? This is going to determine whether or not a specific enemy can be spawned from a DOV. DOV will have a couple options of enemies that are listed in there, but won't be able to spawn. To access the enemy definition static table, we're going to enter the DB static text entries. So we're going to select window, scroll down to DB text entries, and select static. From there, we're going to type enemy definition into the search bar and double click the enemy definition static table. For this example, I wanted something that was small and spawnable, so I scrolled down until I found this DW underscore wolf entry. If we go over to the registry table and scroll down to DW underscore wolf, we'll see that it's of type dark wizard wolf. Next, we just need to check the table next to it and make sure is spawnable is selected. To spawn our dark wolf enemies, first we're going to select our DOV in our level. Then we're going to scroll down to the spawn properties section in the details panel. Then we'll select this plus button. And in this first tab, we're going to select the enemy definition. And then we'll select the second tab and scroll down until we find a DW underscore wolf. Then I'm going to open the spawn groups and I'm going to change the min actor count. So it's originally going to spawn one. I want it to spawn five dark wolves. Now, if I walk into the activation distance, it's going to trigger all five of those dark wolves clumped together in the middle of the DOV. Next, we'll go over how to set specific spawn locations for those wolves. To add a spawn location, we're going to use the search bar in our place actors panel to search spawn. From here, we're going to find spawn location and drag and drop this into our level. First, we'll need to get the name of our spawn location. So in the level, we'll just select what spawn location we want to use and then look in the world outliner to get the name. So we have spawn location one, then we'll select the DOV and we'll scroll back down to the spawn properties. Once you're here, you'll find an array called spawn locations. So we can hit this plus button to add this location to our array. Then here we can select this and we'll get a list of the spawn locations in the level and we'll select spawn location one. Now, since we're spawning five wolves, I'm going to make five separate spawn locations. So to do this, I'm going to select this spawn location. I'm going to hold the alt button. And while I'm holding alt, I'm going to drag this away. You can also do it by just dragging a spawn location into the level. Either way works. For this, I added four more spawn locations and placed them around the DOV. Next, we'll set these additional spawn locations to our DOV. We'll do this the same way. We'll select our DOV and scroll down to the property setting. Here in the spawn location, we're going to select this plus button to add four more locations. Then we'll add these additional ones. We have spawn location two, spawn location four, spawn location five, and spawn location six. Now all that's left to do is test our DOV. For this test, I expanded the cool volume just so the combat encounter won't end if I get too far away from the wolves. So I'll press play. Then I added a little sphere in the middle so I know where the middle of the DOV is. If I walk towards this, the wolves will spawn in a circle around me and then we can start our combat encounter. Now something I noticed during that test was that a lot of the wolves spawn facing away from the player. That's because the spawn locations are pointing away. So to fix this, we'll hit the E key and rotate it so that that blue arrow is pointing towards the middle of the DOV. Once we rotated all of these, if I go back and play the level, so I'll hit Alt P to enter play mode. If I walk towards the middle of that sphere, the enemies will spawn facing towards me. Thanks for watching. That's going to be it for this video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, and let me know what kinds of tutorials and videos you'd like to see next. Wizards Forge Mons, out.